This is the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, which is in charge of uh, overall operations for the station. The Payload Operations Integration Center at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center is in charge of the working with the crew uh, on science on board the station and monitoring uh, autonomous payloads as well. There's a group of scientists at Marshall in Huntsville, Alabama that are leveraging vantage point of the International Space Station in Earth orbit to provide some unsurpassed images of Earth rather than of space. The iServe camera turns its attention to our home planet, taking hundreds of images a week to record the changing landscape of the environment. The uh, folks at Marshall work with the iServe team to ensure the camera records the desired images as the station orbits the Earth. Bill Hubshire at Marshall caught up with Burgess Howell, the iServe principal investigator, who shared some recently captured images. We've shot about 40 or 45,000 frames. Don't have the count handy right now. Um, our normal operation mode is we shoot three frames per second. Uh, and we start before we reach a target and uh, end afterwards. So uh, a, a normal target, we'll, we'll be getting anywhere from um, 30 to 150 frames. Now there are some targets where we've been uh, acquiring a lot more data than that. The first one is uh, an area called Los Glaciares. Uh, it's a national park in Argentina. It's right on the Argentine and Chilean border. And it's, uh, it's particularly significant because it's one of the few areas where there are glaciers, uh, specifically a, a glacier called Perito Moreno, which is actually growing. Most of the glaciers in that area, uh, in, that, in that particular glaciation field there, are, are shrinking. Uh, but uh, Perito Moreno is, is growing, and there's a lot of research there uh, trying to figure out exactly what's going on, why this one particular area, as opposed to the other areas, are, are increasing. Glaciation is one of those things that has, it's, um, it's a fingerprint of what the current climate is and how, how things may be trending. So uh, glaciation studies around the world are, are very important. The next one is, uh, is, is Lake Titicaca. This particular image is on the, the northwestern shore of Titicaca, right at the border between Peru and, uh, and Bolivia. Uh, Titicaca is a, a, a very important area. It's a, a, a local, huge local fishery. It's a, a very important the local area because of the, the tourism business there. And it also is a, uh, an indicator of the health of the planet. As the water level rises and falls, and as the water quality increases and decreases, it's a good indicator of, uh, of what's going on generally in the environment. The next image that we have is the Upper Nile in Sudan. This is a late afternoon shot. Uh, you can see there's a, a pink glow cast across the, the landscape from the setting sun there. Um, the Nile, of course, is, is, uh, is, is critical for agriculture in the area. Most of the population uh, in the desert environments live along uh, riverbanks. The Nile, of course, is the, the focus of the population in that area. Um, what you see here is a set of villages that are interspersed with agriculture along the banks of the Nile. Uh, the Nile itself is the, the source both of the water and the fertilization for those fields. Uh, the people in those areas depend on the, the agriculture that's in their local area to survive. And modifications to the environment, the, the Nile has been modified uh, over the last 50 years or so uh, to uh, have some significant effect on, on the ability of the people to uh, conduct their agricultural activities. Next image we've got here is, uh, is a volcano. This is Vulcan San Miguel down in El Salvador. Um, uh, one of the activities that we try to keep up with here is, is monitoring as many volcanoes as possible. We like to be sure that we've got a good baseline data set. Um, Volcan San Miguel is interesting to us because it erupted very recently. It was, uh, it was active as late as uh, late December of last year, 2013. Um, if you look closely at this image, you'll see that there's a white area that are immediately around the cone. That's the, uh, the ash fall from the, the most recent <clears throat> um, eruption. Around that there's a pinkish tan area. Those are pyroclasts that were spit out by the, uh, by the uh, volcano during the eruption. And then downhill you can see in a few places where the, the uh, sparks from the uh, volcano have, uh, have lit off and burned some of the surrounding landscape, the, uh, the, the forest at the base of the, the mountain there. The last image that I was going to show you today was uh, Cerro Chicut. Cerro Chicut is an area in, uh, in Guatemala. The image that you see here is a spot where they've been having persistent landslides. If you look closely, you can see that the land has uh, slipped. The landslide is moving from upper right to lower left toward the, the river there. And you can see that the river itself has widened at the base of that hill because of the influx of material coming down the hill. Um, it, this, this particular landslide is, is, is persistent and ongoing. It's been going on for quite some time now. It affects the local population that it's dangerous for them, of course. But it also, um, it also is destroying some of the agricultural areas as well as modifying the river flow downstream.
these are images that we consider fairly significant for a variety of purposes, a variety of reasons. Not just because they're pretty, which, which we happen to think that they are, um, but because they, they, they look at, they, uh, they are pertinent to specific areas of the research that uh, Severe is involved with and that NASA supports in general. Howell and the uh, ISERV group are now creating a searchable database that would allow anybody to, uh, who has access to the internet to uh, search the photos that they've been taking. We'll let you know once they get that online.